The Crow Nation is actually was a very vast land. I always say that I believe our ancestors were kind of like the conquistadors, you know, they, they were very dominant uh, historically and had accessed, I want to say, you know, probably 35 million acres originally was Crow land. But, you know, afterwards, you know, with, with the, um, the treaties and the reduction, there was great reduction in our land. Uh, which was Crow land, now reduced down to about 2.2 million acres. It's vast, it's rural, it's beautiful. There's lots of mountains, even though I feel that, you know, uh, there, it was reduced because the Crow land had once went into the areas of, through um, Bellings, as far as Bozeman, Montana, which is, you know, several hours from here, um, was Crow land and even into Wyoming, but here we are. Um, reduced down, but actually sitting on rich natural resources. And our people are strong, resilient, uh, despite uh, all the adversities that we've gone through historically. When I had my babies, I had a set of twins, a boy and a girl. And my little girl ended up with a rare childhood cancer and she lived almost just a year and passed away. I strongly believe, you know, that she could have been healed and, and, and that, that there was a lot of um, passion in my heart, spiritual strength to cope during this trial. But after she did pass on, you know, although disappointed, I didn't stay disappointed. What I went through in that trial of losing my little daughter to cancer was the passion that has been stemmed in, in my heart so that if I could help someone else prevent this disease, I am willing to take those steps. It just seems like there was just some open doors with a little program that was developed here by another Crow lady titled Crow Healthy Mothers Healthy Babies. So this umbrella of Crow Healthy Mothers Healthy Babies then had a little project called Mother Share. And I became a community organizer for that, just working part time. Then it turned out that uh, under this same Crow Healthy Mothers Healthy Babies was a breast and cervical cancer project with the state of Montana, who, would, who was actually in the process of developing the cancer screening program. And so the person that was coordinating that um, really felt in her heart that I would be a good person to coordinate that. So I went from the little mother share project into the uh, breast and cervical cancer coordinator with the state. And so then with that, um, writing a little proposal, we became one of the first um, um, sites to, to provide enrollment and referral for the state screening program. And I actually would enroll Crow women, transport them myself, two or three at a time. I'd schedule pap tests and mammograms for them in Billings, Montana, which um, is about an hour's drive away. And women would receive their appointments. I would just out of my own pocket, treat them to lunch. We, they'd have the pap in the morning and lunch and then mammogram in the afternoon. And it just seems so small, but yet so significant. Then it grew, you know, full time. Then pretty soon I was stationed out of um, the St. Vincent's Hospital Healthcare in Billings, Montana, traveling statewide with the Montana Cancer Control Program, providing outreach and education to all the reservation sites. There's seven reservations in the state of Montana. I traveled on a weekly basis to all the sites, recruiting, enrolling Indian women, educating them. So uh, about the importance of having cancer screening. And that's how I started. And then it just went on to Messengers for Health as I, when I met Suzanne Held, uh, who was involved with the cancer screening program, helping develop the program. And I met her, that was the first time we met. And then um, after my experience and, and the little things I was doing in my community and then traveling statewide, then, um, she was eligible to apply for a, a research grant through American Cancer Society uh, to address cervical cancer. So she asked me, do you think this will work in the Crow community? 
before she even tried to take steps to complete a proposal. And I said, yes, I believe it will. And she met with me and several other Crow women at a little restaurant here in Hardin, Montana. She drove from Bozeman. We sat around, brainstormed just how messengers would work. We came up with that name right away. It's got to be Messengers for Health. We started out uh, in um, doing a little research, collecting data uh, in the community to address um, the cervical cancer awareness and prevention. It really was uh, the found building that foundation, building the foundation of trust in the community. And so and that's how we, uh, Messengers, began. So with our messengers in all these communities, you know, we had people in every community, not just Crow Agency. So we were able to um, work with these people in all our communities, teach them about, you know, their health, you know, and give them a lot of good information on what, you know, how we could help them in certain ways, whether it be, you know, like the medication they have, like, I remember in one group, we had a, um, a little board that we gave them and they wrote all their medication on it and what it's for, what time they take it, you know, and so, you know, that really helped, you know, the people that were in our groups. There are just women that other women trusted women that had a personal experience of cancer themselves, so cancer survivors, and, and women that just were viewed by other women in the community as a natural leader, someone they, they knew that had the integrity, <clears throat> the good characteristics of someone that they could trust, someone that they could confide in. She's an amazing lady. She really is. She's a woman of God, you know, and you have to have that <clears throat> in you. You can tell she has compassion in her heart, you know, a very likable person and she's fun, you know, she likes to laugh. We're not going to be a program that starts something good here and then because funding ends, we diminish. There's more people to reach and there's other issues. And so with that in mind and discussing the sustainability, we decided the best route to go with our advisory board was to become a nonprofit. So Messengers for Health became a nonprofit in 2010. I believe Messengers for Health is the only uh, native nonprofit addressing health in the state of Montana. So it makes me feel good, but it also makes me uh, uh, want to share with other sites that they can uh, apply some of these tools, these how we've structured our, these interventions to, that it will work. Uh, in other reservation sites to help their people as well. It took the research to begin to bring our people to the table, our messengers, these Crow women who did not think they were leaders at all, just took an interest because they know who I am, what I've been through, the trial of losing a little daughter to cancer and how I overcame. And this is something I always share I feel that CBPR really helped us as a Crow Nation to begin to revitalize our own strong cultural resources and strengths that we already have here in the community. That when we came together, that it that we began to realize, hey, this is powerful. As a group of people, we can become oppressed. <clears throat> And when we're in that situation for a length of time, we begin to, we don't see, we don't see what we really have. We begin to forget our cultural values and strengths that helped us to overcome historically the trauma that we went through to become those resilient people that still are existing today and hanging on to our cultural ways and our language. We had to realize that, you know, many of our people were um, having a hard time trusting and that goes back to historical but uh, historically what we've gone through and then not um, not so much really in our community was there really you know research but there was times where there were surveys 
that, that people had taken part in that was supposed to address some need and then nothing ever happened. And see, our people know each other and know what happens. They're very observant in the community. Even if a new person comes in, because we're such a small community, when someone even drives through down Main Street of Crow Agency, you know, everybody knows, well, who's that person? What are they doing, you know? And so it, it's, it's, it's that we, we tend to kind of have a guard, our guard up. And, and when we're thinking about the area of health, we have our Indian Health Service. And yes, they're doing the best that they can, but unfortunately, there's been a lot of mistrust, lack of confidentiality. Some of the barriers that have really deterred people from really feeling like they're, they wanna uh, go there and feel comfortable that if they go and uh, be seen that their information will be kept confidential. Unfortunately, that has been violated. And so, you know, people were very careful. And that's why knowing that it was really important when you're doing research, who the community partner is. And that was me. Who am I? Do the Crow people trust me? And so it was gradual. It was gradual before people bought into it. And once we had a Crow woman that listened, that was in contact with another messenger whom they know, whom they can trust, share with them that, you know, this is why it's so important. This is just some basic knowledge here about why you should go in and have a pap test. And when they went in and had the pap test with a woman provider and found out, well, that wasn't so bad after all. Then they started telling other women it went through word of mouth. When someone has an experience and it's positive, they in turn share it with others. Well, at the present time, you know, this, this pandemic is here. And so what our program is doing is providing some words of encouragement uh, through social media. We have a Messenger's Facebook page. I've done several video clips, one by myself, two with a, a medical provider who worked at IHS for a length of time, whom the, whom the Crow people trust, who was actually adopted by two Crow families. See, that's what Crow people will do. They'll, they'll adopt somebody that's not from the tribe. Why? Because they know that this person is someone they can trust. We are kind of a unique culture of people. Uh, and the way that we love and nurture each other, our close kinships. I believe that our people who are so wise, you know, in, in having this clan system, we, we become part of a clan, you know, um, there's, there's different clans, uh, about six clans. Um, for example, Greasy Mouth Clan, Sore Lip Clan, uh, uh, Big Lodge Clan, uh, Bad War Deeds, are some of the names of our clans and with this clan system it's 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 strength you have a clan aunt or uncle uh that you can rely on when there's times of need times that you need spiritual support in prayer so you invite a clan aunt and uncle to come provide a meal for them and they will pray for you and the prayer isn't just at that moment that present time but ongoing so the support the kinships uh for example uh my my uh mother's sister is also my mother so when i lost my mother at a young age i was only eight her sister and other sisters took the place as my mother and then i ended up you know um being raised by my grandparents and so this clan system and our kinships is set up in a way that there's no void. When there's a loss, there's always someone there to fill that void, to provide the love, nurturing, and, and, and what a young person needs. But our strongest value is our spirituality as a nation of people. It's our foundation. And so because of that, I know that we will overcome and We'll get through this. That passion is there. I grow in that. 
and I just I just continue to to stand up, rise up in my own spirituality, and display that with our people.